I was first diagnosed um, at Memorial Day 2011. Um, I had been having some pain. I thought it was nothing, but I worked at a hospital, so I went to have it checked out and um, ended up finding that I had stage two breast cancer. I didn't want to do the chemo, but I did the chemo. Um, and that was, that was a really, really hard time of my life. I was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer in 2015. I first had tongue cancer in 2014. I have four boys. Well, you know, and I have a grandson, so of course, you know, I'm thinking, oh gosh, they need their mom. You know, so that's why I'm like, I've got to, I've got to beat this. So, here I am. Breakthrough therapy designation is all about the patients, all about science, and it's about treatment and getting treatments to patients that will work for them faster, that are better, and are safe. The Breakthrough Therapy designation was a program that was passed into law in 2012, uh, largely based on the state of science. And the reason that we pursued this designation was that new drugs were coming uh, into the pipeline that had a potentially transformative effect and really merited doing business differently. The collaboration on Breakthrough started with a simple meeting that we had with Rick Pastor and Janet Woodcock. He posed a pretty simple question to us. What should FDA do when we see substantial early benefit in a, in a clinical trial? It seemed obvious, but it wasn't obvious. Breakthrough designation kind of started, I think, as a gleam in the eye of Rick Pazger and me, um, because it was clear uh, with the development of the new targeted therapies and so forth that we were seeing some treatments of really special effectiveness. I think breakthrough therapy came out of the realization that we had to do something different for drugs that were really truly promising and showed pre preliminary evidence of uh, really outstanding activity. One of three Americans will get cancer in their lifetime. And so many of the cancers and other diseases don't have cures. And so what we really needed to do was to find a way to get the drugs from the research labs to the clinics. Breakthrough therapies is a wonderful way to do that, especially for diseases for which we don't have a cure. Drugs were being developed uh, with a aim of a, a specific target. And these targeted therapies for metastatic melanoma were really the ground zero uh, that brought forth the light that we really needed to start doing something different. Friends of Cancer Research and the Brookings Institution held a co-sponsored conference, and this was one of the topics. This was controversial at first, but uh, friends really persevered in um, working up this idea and bringing in the community, bringing in the experts, talking it through until they developed some consensus around it. There was not a more resilient proponent of this legislation than Friends of Cancer Research, and I would say in particular Ellen, who beat me to death uh, over and over again about the importance of getting this done. Congress was essential in breakthrough and their leadership and their commitment to patients in making this happen set the course for breakthroughs. You know, they worked with us and helped us to understand forwards and backwards these issues and then uh, helped push the, the legislation through. So, you know, we can take a lot of credit as, as senators, but really it's the outside groups like that that I think make the difference. And I want to give them the credit because uh, they deserve it and, and uh, I want them to keep going. Ellen Siegel and Marlene Mallett came to us and said, help, we need to get this bill passed through the House in order for it to become law. And of course, we uh, jumped right on that and were able to make that happen. Throughout the process of working to make breakthrough therapy a reality for patients, we saw something that we do not typically see in Congress, and that is bipartisanship. I couldn't find better partners than Richard Byrne or Hatch on breakthrough therapies. It would ne literally, it would just would not have happened if 
there had not been bipartisan support. Our effort, we, we knew that, yeah, we could get maybe most of the Republicans, uh, but we needed the Democrats too. This was really important legislation that it's not only gonna provide the hope for these folks, it's gonna find the cure. Yes, I am alive today because of breakthrough, because of this breakthrough. Maybe another breakthrough therapy will come with a cure or with another ability to keep you from progressing. Um, but to know that there was actually so much hope and that there were women who were living five years, maybe even 10 years with the disease when I had thought that three was my number. It just took a huge weight off of me. We really were expecting to see one drug a year. Uh, after the first year, though, we had had far more than one. And of course, we had only thought maybe five applications a year would come in because that would kind of been the track record over time that there aren't that many or hadn't been that many really transformative treatments. Uh, in any given year. I think one of the major issues with the breakthrough therapies is not only what the breakthrough therapies do for the drugs that get the designation, but really the change of culture here in the FDA. It really prompted our staff to work more closely with sponsors on really the continuum of drug development rather than looking at it in very truncated or individual drugs. The success of breakthrough therapy uh, has been emulated by other regulatory agencies, most notably by the EMA in Europe and also the Ministry of Health in Japan. So to Friends of Cancer Research, the only thing that I have to say, not only did you have an impact on the U.S. patient, but your effects are seen globally. I am so proud of Friends of Cancer Research and so thankful for all of our partners. We're just beginning with breakthrough. It's changed the way we develop drugs. There's going to be so many new treatments because of this for patients with all diseases. So we're profoundly excited and thankful for this designation and for all that work so hard to achieve it. The key is to not lose our, uh, our courage and not lose our desire to help and to everybody pitch in and let's make sure that we, we don't stop till we get these matters solved. My message to Friends of Cancer Research and Ellen and Marlene and everybody associated with the group is just keep fighting because you really are one of the game changers in Washington. You're so special and we really, we need you in this fight. Thank you for being optimistic. Thank you for believing that we could actually get something done. Thank you for being relentless in your advocacy. Thank you for insisting on bipartisanship at a time when our politics is so partisan. Uh, and I would say finally, thank you for creating such an enduring legacy. Well, it's a very exciting time for cancer research. Uh, new, new treatments are being, are being discovered all the time. And so I anticipate, hope, and pray that we will just continue to see more and more breakthrough therapies come out. And as soon as this drug that I'm on now stops working, that there'll be something maybe even more wonderful that's come out as a new breakthrough therapy. Um, and then another one after that, another one after that, until my life has ended up extending until I'm in a nursing home. <laughs> March 2nd of 2016, I started that treatment, and I've been on it ever since. And I'm doing well. I mean, I mean, I have more quality of life. Um, I can do more. I can be able to maybe see, I have two more boys I can see graduate. It's, it's amazing. For some, for some people go through storms, and I just feel this is my time, so I'm just, ready to fight.